All right, listen up, folks. Listen up. We're in a bit of a crisis here. Uh, I'm sitting with uh, uh, my co host for the Homestuck 91 Reasons Special Edition podcast. And uh, real quick, I- I'm the voice, Jeff Tucker. I'm here with Austin and Luna. Listen, Austin's losing his mind because <clears throat> he keeps thinking conversations with Luna in their bedroom are be- are being recorded and sent out as podcasts. And he's like, so last night we were talking about the show. And Luna's like, we, di- we didn't do a show. We haven't done a show in a week. <laughs> he's like, oh, my God, my whole life is a podcast. Everything is becoming a show. Now, l- let's talk about that for a minute. Are you uh, you're you're are you losing grip? Is it like the Matrix? Like you don't know what's the real world and what's the Matrix world? Maybe, maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> how many times do I tell you on a on a day you come in, you know, sliding across the floor on socks on linoleum, and you go, "Oh my god, oh my god, oh, 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 Andrew Hussey, Dante," and I go, "Just save it for the show." You can't save it for the show. Normally, there's so much content within the end of the week that we never have enough time to talk about it all. Well, you know, you have to encapsulate it in a succinct hour. That being said, before we get to the meat, I have to say that on my trip to the swap meet this week, I came across an actual peripheral homestuck item. What? Mm-hmm. A beautiful, brand new condition hook comforter. Yes. So now you, you can cuddle up Andrew Hussey style. With Dante Basco <laughs> every night. And you're already sleeping on sheets, right? Yeah. Yes. This is and the, the beauty. And, and, and the pillowcase. Now you have the comforter. So you're either living every Homestuck fan's dream or you're in a coma and it's actually 1991. <laughs> oh, maybe. What could be worse? What could be better? <laughs> All right. Uh, I am the voice. I am Jeff Tucker of 91 Reasons. You are? Austin. Luna. And uh, you guys are going to keep us up to date because apparently, as always, a lot happened. So I'm just going to move the mic over and you guys take it away. Very moment the podcast ended last week. We ran to the bedroom, turned MSPA on, and there was a news post. And it just said, next update is 422. Here we are. And it has happened. There were... Two flashes today. Two giant Two animation. Two giant flashes. Flashes, no, flashes are a big deal for those non-homestucks. These are, it's an animation Hussey does. Normally it's three to five minutes. Those are the big ones. And it takes about like hundreds of panels and compacts into one <sighs> music video. Normally they're, they could be anywhere from a month apart to... A, at one point there was a year and a half with no flashes. It's just whenever he feels like they're needed. Today we got two, and they were bigger ones. Two flashes. Two, two flashes. <laughs> um, my thing is that one flash got me so unbelievably hyped and excited. One got me so disappointed to only come to the realization that the flash was supposed to make me disappointed. And then, wait, why did I just watch a flash that's supposed to make me feel disappointed? <laughs> why does this exist in the first As place? As always, it'll make more sense for serial readers. <laughs> yeah, I... But not as a live weed. Yeah. So, the first flash. The first flash is MSPA reader have mental breakdown. Now, for those unaware, it has been a constant gag since 2008, right? I think, believe so, yeah. That the, um, I think it was Palms who's actually in, 2009? 2008. Oh, wow. That the um, computer would zoom out and it would be a problem sleuth drawn guy. And he'd be the MSPA weedo reading problem sleuth or Oli Homestuck. And the joke would always be that he would walk towards a uh, tree stump from the Jailbreak Adventure, and he would almost try and suit himself with the gun from Jailbreak. Mm-hmm. And so this joke has surprisingly come up again with the John Retcon story, and it's kind of weird to see the um, new Halasi art, and then he's cut back to this really old 2008 stick figure. But this was a sound. MSPA Weedle mental uh, mental break gen, uh, yeah <laughs> mental break uh. you're having a mental breakdown <laughs> I am I'm having a mental breakdown right now this is trying not a podcast we're not recording anything are you okay oh my <laughs> god <laughs> so what do you think of the flash when it started uh uh I, I I don't even know I didn't know what to expect we saw it on our phone and it was about an hour till we get home and watch it so we didn't know what we were going into I took a guess actually. And 
there are going to be spoilers for those of you who have not caught up yet. So it's please. It's been 24 hours. I think we're good. That's yeah. really the Homestuck update. So uh, if uh, you haven't wet, go catch up with Homestuck. <laughs> so I was like, please let this be the flash of my dreams. The flash of my dreams involves references to death from Problem Sleuth, Aimless Renegade. It also makes AR or Little Hal, Doc's computer, the villain of Homestuck, because they always thought he would make the greatest villain. And then I would love for the Flash to immediately be cut off by a Meta car cat who finally reveals he knew the ultimate riddle. This is like my Homestuck dream. So I saw this Flash and I just flipped out because it looked like the Flash of my mm -hmm. dreams. Now I was deceived. <laughs> it was not the Flash of my dreams, but it was so close. So close. It is a. It starts out with a recap of Little Cal the Puppet, showing every place in the comic the puppet has been. Mm -hmm. And the MSPA reader is flipping out over the puppet, because the puppet has been revealed to be always watching the kids everywhere. In, it's the final payoff to Andrew Hussey's Saw references. We mm -hmm. get to see all the Act 2 Saw the scenes. Saw's theme song playing through the Flash. The theme song is the theme song to Saw, and the loading screen to the Flash is even the Saw logo. Yeah. The Swole. Um, And then it points out Aimless Renegade <laughs> and Dork's Computer AR. And it says Aimless Renegade AR, Dork's Computer AR, 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 Illuminati confirmed. And there's a little Illuminati it triangle. It's a triangle from the shades and a triangle from AR's hat. And, and it just says Illuminati confirmed. And then it just keeps doing this. It keeps over, doing it. It keeps doing it, over. It, it, it. Then it goes through the entire comic, pointing at every triangle, saying confirmed, confirmed. And then the widow continues, like, he drops on the ground and starts sweating as it points out little Cal Watson, the kids, and triangles everywhere. Yeah. And it, it's glorious. There's a, a popular panel of Solix freaking out from a flash. Where he's, it has little shipping symbols. No, no, there's so many different things of what it could mean that people have talked about. So Hasi just replaced the shipping symbols first with Gamzies, and then they, the whole screen inverts colors, and it turns into Illuminati triangles. The screen keeps inverting colors and flashing. Uh. Mm -hmm. And then there's a four times Illuminati confirmed combo, and they smash together into a, a truth explode. And then the MSPA weeder finally just literally falls from his computer. <laughs> there's a little scene of him stick for you falling off the computer, mm -hmm. and then he inverts colors permanently. This is a really weird transformation. First, he gets Problem Sleuth's eyes. Mm -hmm. He gets Death's eyes from Problem Sleuth. They grow bigger and they yeah. stay like that. And then he actually flashes colors to the at manual that Carcat mm -hmm. has. So he is literally Death from Problem Sleuth for some reason. The MSPA reader is for some. Why? I don't know. Why is the MSPA reader Death from Problem Sleuth? So then he goes to the stump, which actually has a harpoon in it. Mm -hmm. And this is Ace Dick's harpoon from Problem Sleuth. Yeah. Let me remind you. Other than the goof Hussey had with the Prosperton statues, and subtle nods and references like Aradia saying, Life is just another game in Death's the cupboard. Windows. The windows. This is like the first time we've had it's such a blatant reference to Problem Sleuth yeah. being a canon the thing that happened. The last time MSPA Reader was shown, it showed there was Land of Stumps and Dismay, low sad, and it did not have the harpoon in it. Now it's got now the it harpoon. Does. It it and he lifts the tree stump, and there's a gun underneath from Jailbreak. It's drawn badly, just like yeah, from Jailbreak. And it's great because it's smooth animation, and the stump is like he's saking, and the yeah. stump is coming to view. And I'm like, it's so weird. Like, I'm up with that so long ago in Jailbreak, and now it's in full HD. Uh -huh. And then he whips the stump open, and it's a 2008 badly drawn gun. It was so mm -hmm. beautiful. It just. Jailbreak was like 2006. 2006, right? Yeah. I don't know, it makes me nostalgic because I read Jailbreak before I read Homestuck. Mm -hmm. but this is 2013 you read it in. Yeah, I know, yeah, I didn't read it. You still didn't read it before. Yeah, like a week before. <laughs> you read Sweet Bro and you read Jailbreak. And then I finally decided to read this Homestuck thing mm -hmm. and it ruined my life. <laughs> and then, finally, the Flash starts chuckle voodooing us as the Weedle. Yeah, Cal starts coming at the screen and Gamzee starts flashing... Like, oh god, is this the end of the Act 6 expansion conference? Is it turning us into Lord English? I was scared, like, I th what I could get from it is that little Cal was chuckle voodooing us, the MSPA Weedo guy, and forcing him to grab the gun and suit himself. Yeah. Lord English took control of the Weedos and is forcing him to suit himself. My goodness. <laughs> and then the Flash immediately gets cut off by a gray hand scratching yeah. the record. I was almost crying. I was so happy because this was it. This was Car Cat finally breaking the record, becoming Mada. We formed this. Me and Luna performed this perfect theory. Mm. Oh my god, it was so perfect, and it might actually happen. So I'm gonna say it. Here we go. My theory was that Doc, but Car Cat was gonna become Doc Scratch in the Trickster Room, 
and that he was going to be a host to us and give us panels that were the West of Homestuck split mm -hmm. into story arcs. One panel will be John and Roxy's story, one Vriska and Terezi, yeah. stuff like that. And the old click the panels gag. Yeah. And Carcat fits because the whole cancer thing with the cherubs and Doc Scratch is the uh, uh, symbolic form of Calliope. Yeah. So Carcat could take the narrative. Plus, it would look like the, the, he had the gramophone, so it's in the trickster room, which is a photorealistic room that's underneath a rooftop where a big battle yeah. would take place. And so it really fits Doc Scratch's apartment. And I thought they'd make more offense to Doc Scratch's apartment because Doc Scratch has Spade Slick as a visitor come. And if Cockat's going to be there, of course Spade Slick's going to visit him. He's his fatherly figure. Uh -huh. Why wouldn't Spade Slick come and visit him? This is made of space. Anything can happen. Yeah, it's just made of this. Cockat would finally talk about how made of things mm -hmm. are. And... I, we, we speculated that by watching um, movies so much, because of his obsession with movies, he had figured out the code to crack reality. Yeah, everything so, they do is a movie reference. Yeah, so he'd finally figure it out. Mm -hmm. Specifically through stuff like Neverending Story. Yeah, then like, he'd watch Saw and figure out how to defeat Lord English. Yeah, and that might actually still happen. Mm -hmm. I think it will. But what really got me was this really good Jade theory we had formed. Yeah. This was really good. Okay, it, so Carcat and Jade correspond to the Midnight Crew for some reason. Carcat being Spade Slick because of his constant kismasis he's in. He's also, he looks up to Spade Slick as a fatherly figure. And blood. And blood. He's, he's related to blood. It was Spade Slick. And then Jade represents Snowman. See where Snowman's dress? Mm -hmm. See what represents the universe? Space. And all, space. And the fog things he's got going. Mm -hmm. So, I we came up with this idea that Caw Cat and Jade will Snowman and Spade Slick like in the yeah. Doc Scratch segment. You know how that ended. That ended with uh, Spade Slick and Snowman having to duel on the rooftop. Doc Scratch yelling at Spade Slick to pull the trigger and suit her. Yeah. And, but wait a minute. Why would Caw Cat be on the roof being forced to mm -hmm. suit Jade, though? Well, well that's because it's Grimbark Shade. Yeah. And there's an old uh, uh, line in Act, what, two? Or Act two. two. Day of talking to Jade. Yeah, two or three. And uh, they're talking about Beck, for, and this is before Jade's ever shown. She's Gigi with her dog Beck, and she goes about, "Oh yeah, my dog made me do this, and he did this, and he he lifted a meteor out of the sky, and blah 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 blah." And there's like, "Man, that's one messed up dog. It's like rabies or something. You gotta take it out behind the shed, blow its brains out." And Jade just starts now, crying. Now we have a corrupted Jade that needs to be taken down, and. Um, a little bit of evidence to that is the second time that's actually said in comic is during the Jade Cat segment at the end of Act 5, yes, Act 2. That specific segment. Insert. Yeah. And he ta uh, the dream sequence of Never Ending Story, where they, he, Hussey's riding Falcor, and Falcor's got Lord English eyeball eyes, and Hussey's being mind-controlled by Vriska. Well, it comes back, and Hussey's like, he's all upset, and he's like, yeah, Falcor got rabies, had to take him out behind the woodshed and blow his brains out. He was being controlled well, by Lord Inglis. In that, for, in, in that context, rabies was the Lord English chuckle voodoo disease. The uh, In every universe, at least one person gets taken over by Lord English. Goes collapse. Accordingly, apparently in Hussey's session was Falcor. Yeah. I... Because if he had um, uh, Hook as his planet, and whoever he played a session with probably had a never-ending story. Yeah. Their I... sessions were all movie-based. I'm dying to know more about this session. There's just little hints here and there. It's not, and it's mostly, a lot of it's on form spring jokes. Yeah. Falcor's actually in comic. That's a big deal. He does say that in and comic. Rufio's in comic. Yeah. But then I was like, wait a second, wait a second. So if Cockett really has to blow Jade's brains out, there's no way he'd do that. It's backwards character development. And then we thought Cockett wouldn't suit Jade. He'd suit something else, and the salt would get deflected at yeah, her and kill her. Everything, everything Jade touches gets a bullet reflected into it. See, suits in the back, it reflects and kills Dave. Mm -hmm. And Grandpa Holly dies by a reflected bullet. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that Jade would die by a reflected bullet. So that's a possibility, maybe, this whole yeah. segment, please. It'd be the perfect ending to Call Cat's story. No, Riska shows up and just puts Jade to sleep at the end. And so, like, I click the next page. Like, this is it. This is what I'm waiting for. I was excited the whole day. I was going to school. Like, I could, I'm in class right now, and I'm like, my dream Saxon of Homestuck is on MSPA right now. I could be reading it. And then I finally, it finally goes up. And I was kind of confused. <laughs> it comes up with an Instagram logo made of Riska's horns. And then it zooms out of the record, and it's actually Vriska there. And then she starts playing Moon Saddle, which is arguably one of my favorite Homestuck songs of all time. So it's, I'm not disappointed at this point, okay? It's not Call Cat, it's Vriska, okay? I was kind of mad because I don't like the Vriska Wetcon story, how she went with that, or... Mm. 
But okay, Moon Saddle. And then I, oh boy, oh my god. Where do I go from here? Luna, help me out. <laughs> help me. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, she did, she, I, I don't know. So she did a slideshow of everything we've missed. Everything has changed. Yeah. And there is now zero character development. Every character is happier than they've ever been. They're all in a relationship with each other. It's one big happy family. Uh, there's nothing bad. Everything, the, the, all the interesting story arcs and characters and conflicts are gone. Everything is 100% happy. We just supposed that the moment Cockhead got on the sip, he started smiling and falling in love with everybody on the media. Yep. <laughs> like, something isn't right here. And the details, he, he went as far as to show every little subplot was happy. He showed Rufio and Damara happy together. He showed Kanaya talking with Poem happily, even though she was nervous in the Alpha timeline. Every tiny situation that a character had to overcome to develop their character is now gone. Mm -hmm. So every character is acting as if, like... Carcat's acting like Act 3 Carcat. We got, like, Act 2 O's here, you know? And some of them were completely out of character, especially Dave. Mm -hmm. And it's none of Hussey's art. It is, um, Tumblr art is popular through the fandom. That apparently Hussey had nothing to do with. It was Waitzel who hired them all. Mm-hmm. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Waitzel hired them all. Yes. She He's said like, on Reddit that she was the one talking to all of them. Hussey just wrote down descriptions of what panels he wanted, and Rachel passed them on to her favorite artists. From what we can get, the artists did not know they were making a flask. They thought they were making a What Pumpkin project yeah, of some Rachel sort. Rachel just said, we need you for a What Pumpkin project. I am the head of What Pumpkin. We need you to just, just draw 650 by 450 panels of these scenes. And the uh, panels were apparently very, very specific. Every little detail. Every little detail. Down to stuff down. like, we want Dave's head on Carcat's lap here. Uh -huh. We want Carcat and Dave selling these earphones here. Uh-huh. Like, it's every tiny little stereotypical fluff thing you'd see. Selling earbuds or laying on each other's laps and watching an image of Dane Cook. How do you feel about this? Hmm. I, I, I don't know. It's 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 really bizarre. It's just it's every fandom thing thrown to one flash. He's really hitting it hard here at the end. He's only got a, about six hundred pages left to go, so he's fitting as many fandom jokes as he can. But like, it's the tiniest fandom stuff. Even like, he draws the mail sort of the Dave. That's a constant thing the fandom yells about. In the previous page, he did the whole Solix Gamsy thing the fandom was yelling about. Yeah. The little house fight that everyone had made. Uh, mm hmm. He's trying to fend as many fandom references yep, as he can. Yep, because he can, and because he doesn't know if he's going to be able to after this. Yeah. I don't think he himself knows what he's doing after Homestuck ends. He's confused. He's, he has a video game and Paradox base to sit on and make money with, but creatively-wise, he's out of stuff. You he's going to get bored. Teen Sun Romance was more important than we think. Mm -hmm. I know people started freaking out when Bill Stroud started talking about how he's taking orders from Little Cal at the camp, but it gets much more deeper than yeah, that. Yeah, the last page. Yeah. Our cat's going on about how maybe in some other timeline we would have would better, Dave, and we won't be so sad. Well, and here it is. We saw it today. This is the other timeline where Dave and Carcat are cuddling and watching Dane Cook movies. And it's the exact same panels. I saw comparisons of them. Carcat and Dave cuddling and watching Dane Cook is exactly the same as them d throwing each other on the table and yeah. battling. Dave rapping by himself in the dock is Carcat, Dave, and Kanai and all of them hanging out. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Dave and Cockat playing hopscots together. What was that a reference to? Nothing, I don't think. No, I thought that was a Pacific... Oh, them drawing in Rose's Yeah, palace. them it's drawing in Rose's Scratchy. It's, it's a, the fact that they're drawing, but now it's as a friendly thing. Not yeah. A, it's really loosely related, but it's enough to tell that he Hussey reread the, the Act 6 animations. I, it took me a moment to connect every little wee accent I saw on Tumblr, piece them all together, and realized, you know... The one where all the horrible stuff happened to the characters is the really, really good timeline. And this new timeline is the worst timeline in all of Homestuck. And the more I think about it, the more I realize Lord Inglis has won, people. <laughs> he, his goal was to destroy reality, but guess what he did? He's distorted reality to the point where nobody has any character. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to destroy reality. He wanted to destroy the webcomic of Homestuck. And that's exactly what he's done. That was his plan. Mm -hmm. And especially because two things. Number one. If the characters had no obstacles to overcome, any mistakes or realize or any challenges, they're going to be a lot weaker when battling Lord Inglis. Yes, that's what Hussey, t the direct Hussey told that to Caliborn. Yeah. Which could mean Hussey just gave Lord Inglis the idea right there. Yeah, that he's mentioned the Caliborn acts ago himself, mm -hmm. talking to the character of Caliborn. Act 6, intermission 5? Yeah. I believe 5. The, what 4 he or 5. He goes on a... 
Uh, oh, you know what? It's actually, it's in Act 6, Act, act 5, Act 2, ti- act, no, Act 6, Act 5, Act 1, Times 2 combo. Okay. Right after Trickster Mode. And he tells Caliborn, you can't just give him Trickster Mode, it's a cheat code. They're not going to learn anything. It's like if Mario had unlimited power stars, he's going to walk through the levels. He's never actually going to get good at the game. Yeah. I... So now, Caliborn has said, hmm, you're saying if I take away the, the all their problems, they won't get any chance to learn? So, the, the the comic has now been morphed in such a way that none of the characters have overcome anything. And it's... So they don't have any skills. And it's all at loading this as control. He made John do all those mm-hmm. wetcons. The and wetcon un- loops. And now it's not the time for them to have relationships, because it's going to lead to... Uh, you saw Rose and Kanaya in Game Over. Yeah. Kanaya dropped, Rose instantly went in tears, and let the Condis kill her. Yeah. Huh? So... <laughs> this is this is important, okay? Jump in no, I'm just Come saying on. you guys are screaming. Everybody's turning the volume down. <laughs> You're like on the mountain with big homestuck tablets. These are the laws passed down, <laughs> and I will speak loud and clearly. So, I don't know, because Lord Inglis is winning. He really is. He's broken apart reality, and now the kids have no mm-hmm. skills. And furthermore, the final tip of Lord Inglis's plan. Just, just because he's Caliborn, he's gonna make Dave Cat canon because Dave Cat was Caliborn's OTP mm-hmm. in what was it, the second Homo Suck Act? Yeah, he made it very clear he liked Dave Cat. Yeah, that Dave and Carcat were meant to be with he get together. So when he has the chance to alter Wetcons to do anything he wants to reality through John, through puppeting him, um, he's gonna make Dave Cat canon. Mm-hmm. John just unintentionally, without knowing it, thinking he saved the day through Trezzy's plan, did everything Lordingus wanted. Reduced the kids to nothing so he could easily suck yeah. them in the house, well, Juju. How, how, how did Calbar know that? This is weird. This is really weird. This is the first time a villain's done something that isn't a loop. Yeah. Every Homestuck villain has found a, has been a loop. This is the first time Caliborn says, the retcon is going to happen, and it happened, and now we're just off. We're not looping back to the start again. The MSPA reader breakdown, mental breakdown, closed the Caliborn See, loop, and now he gets to do whatever he wants. What's it, he gonna do? He fulfilled <laughs> all of Homestuck up to this point. Has been Lord English has been doing nothing but ensuring the loop was closed. Now he's free to wreak havoc. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Matter, because everything was just to make sure he existed so that he could exist in the first place. And the thing about Lord English is like, what is he gonna do? He doesn't seem that powerful. It's just Caliborn. But what scares me about Lord English is not Equius's buffness or mm-hmm. the Caliborn look or Gamzee's mm-hmm. hawk or any of that. It's that he has the mind of AR, Little Hal. And if you go back and read some of Little House chats, he's terrifying. Yeah. Little House terrifying. So what is he gonna do? We don't know. My god, like what does he we have planned? What his plan is. What's his motive? We don't know yet. <laughs> What are we going to know? SPA. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. What does this do for him? He's done it. You Congratulations. You've mm-hmm. got one of the beta kids. You've looped it all. You can do whatever you want. What are you going to do? Like, it's like when John says, Oh, Nana, in Act 2, we're going to save the world. John, no. This is much bigger than that. Well, Caliborn's now at the point of, I'm going to rule the multiverse. It, it, this, it still isn't cutting it. There's still nothing here. <laughs> this guy is still pointless. <laughs> He's got to have some motive. Do you, do you know what, Lord, what, do, what do you think? Uh, yeah, Lord English is, uh, he's probably English. Ah, uh, no, he actually, he, uh, Jake English beat him up, and he said, in return, I will take his name. Well, that's about it. He just outright said it. Yeah. In this long paragraph, of, I'm going to take his name, okay? I'm taking the name. That's what all this foreshadowing is for. I'm taking the name. There, you guys get it? Good. Because <laughs> that was a fandom joke. Everyone guessed for years that he take his name somehow. Yeah. So he's like, yes, I'm doing it. I'm taking the name. Enough already. <laughs> Please move on. So we're going to we get an update why, on Sunday. Sunday night. The what, first calendar just went up. What are we going to cut to? Um, it's going to, right where the Flash left, left off, with Dirk about to decide what he's going to prototype. And this time, all we know is it won't will not be a Arqueus. That's all yeah. we know. It won't be that. It won't be the combination of Equius and AR. It could be Equius and something else. Could be AR and something else. Could be two new things. We don't know. We don't need any it more just, ARs in this. Oh my God, no. Risk of the things we do. 
because Varissa is getting back into her complex of, I need the spotlight, I need to be the one to set everything in motion. Lord English exists already, so why don't I be the one to create him? But she doesn't, failing to see that the, that's not how the timeline works. The loop, that's not how the loop works at all. If she continues with the whole, Lord English exists, so why don't I make him? She's just gonna end up with a second Lord English, and that's, see, not, that's not what we want. What I was telling Luna only uh, in all conversation that was not, not a podcast. Not a podcast. <laughs> Is that Wiska is so obsessed with she has to create everything. It's obvious that what else he created back in Ross, he's got to create Lord English because he has to do it. Mm -hmm. But once again, that's not how things work. Yeah. So he's just going to end up the creating new, a second Lord English. The new retcon timeline means there can now be two alpha versions of a character. There's always been doomed selves and all that stuff. But this is there can actually be two canon alpha versions. So if she keeps doing what she's doing, she's just going to make a second Lord English. This one will probably be wed mm -hmm. to be two cherub colors yeah also because lord english has this weird connection with the hulk and wed hulk come yeah. on it's they're probably gonna dirk's probably going to alchemy to to, to the, they're showing dirk's tavros sprite they skipped right past yeah and we didn't even get to see jake and roxy's they're probably just gonna show up in a panel you see them in the background like oh okay that's what they did two solix and fafetta again i got it yeah. But Dirks is important enough to be on screen multiple panels. And there's only about 600 panels left, so it's really important. So Dirk is just going to mess this up. Or Vriska is going to mess it up for him. They're going to end up uh, uh, spriting something really, really bad. And if Red Lord English really is a thing, because Red Hulk and Red Ca uh, Calibork and Calliope and Red uh, uh, Alpha Verse, Beta Verse, and now Red and Green everything. Uh, then it's probably going to be a direct creation of Dirk Sprite because Dirk Sprite's red. Yeah, this it's is exactly Dave color red. This is the creation of a second Lord English. Yeah. They're going to create some something with Lord English's soul and something bad that's going to make him powerful, and it's going to go into, going to go into a robot, and that'll be this new splinter of Lord English. Now, what you pointed out, Olia, Jack is still a thing that happens though. Yes. So we got one that's so based on. If they're, if they're not careful, there could be two splinters of Lord English in this same universe, and more on their way. There's a lot of Lord Englishes. We got the Caliburn focused Lord English, which is the big skull guy. Uh -huh. We got the little Cal one, which is the Jack Noir guy. Union Jack. Union Jack. Union Jack buff oh, Lord I just English. call him Blade Eye Kindware. Yeah. <laughs> but what about a, a, a AR featured Lord English that's based around AR? Maybe. That's what I'm thinking. But that, uh, that uh, he, then he's he's probably gonna sprite AR again and say D don't don't throw the Equius head and that's disturbing. I'm gonna go grab like my puppet or something. And then AR AR's gonna fly off, do some stuff, some horrible things. No, no. AR is gonna get double sprited and it has to be a dead thing, right? Yes. Because Equius AR happened. It's always a dead thing and an object. Well, Equius was a dead thing, so AR counts as an object. So they have to get a dead thing. What dead things are in the session? Uh, Wolf Strider's body. Bro Strider's body is on its way. There you go. That was us quiet. Well, Bro Strider and AR would just be Bro Strider. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. That's what's being created. Bro Strider's body is what? On Lois? Yeah. I mean, which means it doesn't arrive until the meteor arrives. And they made it very specific. They talked about it very recently that Bro Strider's body is buried oh, there. But has traveled back, so she might have brought it with her. Oh, okay. And uh, Rose's body is also buried there. I'm not. They, they do have Rose's body and Bro's body, but I think it's more likely those are going to get brought back by Jane. Oh, okay. Half of Gamzy, Bro, and another an extra of double Roses will be brought back by Jane. Come on, Bro Spider's body alchemized with Aotic Wheat, Bro Spider. <laughs> you become my God. You become Bro Spider. <laughs> It's all the ducks forming into one. Uh, Come on. There's not, not even a good pun in there with sprites. Sprites always yeah. gotta, gotta have a nice name to them. Either Something that wings nicely. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, there is there's no There's no more pro. dead things in the session. I mean, their whole session's dead. Oh. Void session. How there's about Amos Wenigay? Skeletons. Amos Wenigay. What Dave Sprite? What happens if you sprite a sprite? Will the game just be like, don't do that? Um, look, if Caliborn found a way to mortal his sister's dream self while he was awake in Glitz Suburb, uh -huh. then I don't who knows what'll happen. It'll probably just... Hmm. Will it kick Dave out just spite the crow and then kick Dave into the dream bubbles? Wimble, if Dave Sprite dies, which he did, mm -hmm. it might be possible that he's in the dream bubbles as Doom Dave from the Doom timeline. Yeah. Well, they'd be split again. Somewhere there's a really cool-looking Dave that's much older, and he's got a bird on his shoulder. When's he gonna sew up? <laughs> 
That's that's a hive swap the crow character. Is a cro- cro- ca- ca. Yeah, that's a hive swap character. I'm calling away now. I don't think we'll see that by beat the end up, of Homestuck. Beat up DA with a big beard and a uh, crow on his shoulder. He's out there somewhere. In the bubbles. <laughs> By the time we catch up, he's going to have an eye patch. There's a lot of really interesting stuff like that I want to see, because at this point, we still think that Jade Hawley knows all the Hive Swap characters. Yeah, because she mentioned meeting trolls that we haven't never met before when she meets when Jade Sprite happens. And when the Alpha Trolls show up, she's like, no, this isn't them. And when she met, and then when they, she met Callie, she's like, no, this is even more new trolls. Like, who, who'd you see the first time? Yeah, something You've Jade met Sprite every now, and Every time you see a troll, you're like, oh my god, a new troll! Who'd you see earlier, then? Who were these new trolls you mentioned? <laughs> yeah, so... Fan trolls. Canon fan trolls. They, they somehow end up in Universe C, remember? Oh, we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> oh, no. What? The Flash uh, mental breakdown is... It's really quick, and no one's... I've never seen anyone talking about it, but it does confirm that it's the Alpha Earth that becomes Caliborn's Earth. Yes. During the fade. Here's something that got me about mental <laughs> breakdown. Now, we saw this huge retcon timeline page, right? Mm-hmm. And I got so angry, like, is this really while he's taking it? And it took me an hour to calm down and finally realize, no, this is purposely bad in every way. This can't be the canon timeline. Especially because Mental Breakdown completely follows the pre retcon timeline yes. and revolves around everything relating to the pre retcon timeline. Yes. If that's as if that's it's Homestead. Interesting. Caliborn exists in both pre retcon and post retcon. Which is interesting given how Lord English works. And even more interesting because that means that in the game over timeline, it, if John hadn't started doing retconning stuff, the Caliborn still would have been created. Yeah. If, the, okay. if things had been kept progressing without John sticking his arm in the juju, then the Earth would have been turned to a desert and Jade would have put it in there, the star, and everything would have happened normally. Gamzee wouldn't have got chopped in half. He would have continued on and raised Caliborn and went back and sprited the Alpha Kid stuff. But what would Caliborn go up to be without the kids, without John putting his thing in the juju? That's the problem. <laughs> Caliborn doesn't turn into Lord English without John putting his thing in the juju. But Cal, but Gamzee only raises Caliborn if John doesn't put his th- hand in the juju. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't know. And you can't say that it's oh, Caliborn only exists in the post retcon. He's been a trick all this time, a red herring that he's in the. He says he's the king of Red Herrings yeah. in his first chat. But that's the, the only problem is that he gives, uh, BYB pointed out, he gives Jake the code for the trickster stuff. And according to Jane, that happens in both timelines. Ugh. That means Calliope and Caliborn must have actively had a computer that would switch between co- timelines and said, okay, I need to go give Alpha Jade, I need to go give Alpha Jake the code. Okay, now I need to go and give uh, a post retcon Jake the code. And that just doesn't make any sense, given the context of the conversation. Oh my goodness, it's holding my head. It doesn't this... make any sense. Ha- what Aussie has written himself into a corner Red here? don't make any sense, because in the same flash, he showed that uh, uh, the Caliborn thing makes no sense, and he showed that Punk Vriska's still alive. Yeah. Which means dream bubbles aren't affected. Which means, for them, it's been th- six years, or... Well, time isn't worth that in Dream Bubbles. John, Vriska and John were together a thousand years in the span of two years. Okay. But it is interesting that the meteor has now flown across Paradox Space twice from the from the perspective so, of the ghosts. Like, for example, imagine Cock Cat, right? Mm-hmm. He goes through three years of this horrible meteor. He finally gets to the Assassin, only to die like five minutes later from yeah. the game over. He gets in the Dream Bubbles. He's walking around like, oh my uh, goodness, I can't believe I'm here. And then suddenly it's another Cock Cat. And he goes, oh, look, another Doom Me. Hi. And he's like, who are you? And he's like, yes. well, it's me, Cock Cat, on my first year of the meteor journey with my yes. buddies Dave and Mayor. This is a the retcon timeline makes it so there can be two alpha canon versions of the characters that exist in in unsynchronized timelines that don't make any sense. My goodness, I need to see these two call cats or the <laughs> ultimate kiss Macy's. This is, every character is this way. I think every character has like an because Hussey made a point to kill them all and then retcon it so they'd all be safe in the dream bubbles. Yes, the only one left behind was uh, Doc. Dirk. But he drowned in the never-ending story sadness. He also made special care to note that all four princes, the uh, Jack, PM, Dirk, Union Jack, and Spade Slick, were in the session when he John retconned. Yes. So they were wiped away. That way there's not two Union Jacks to deal with. Um, Spade Slick wasn't wiped away. We didn't show that he got in. We, can, we have to assume that, though. Or that I... he's still floating and... 
I think I he know. went the other direction. I think he's still flying around. Because yeah. I truly think that if we really do get to see a Cockhead Doc Scratch like segment of any form, it doesn't make Spade Slick's gonna. It, it doesn't make any difference of whether he got retcon back, out, it, who was in it, and then warped back a little bit, or if he's still just flying. That doesn't change anything. Oh, his story doesn't get changed, does it? It doesn't matter. Nothing, nothing that happened affects his storyline, so it won't change him at all. Oh, okay. Unless something drastically different happened between Hussey and Lord English in this world. But we don't know if Hussey's office is safe from retcon or not, because we don't know if that's a dream bubble or a real place somewhere. Hussey's office. Andrew Carnegie's study. Is that Andrew Carnegie's study in a dream bubble somewhere, and Hussey's been dead the whole time because of the white eyes? Or is there an actual session out there the kids could... Let's, let's go over to Andrew Hussey's session. Oh, hi, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, boy. He's... He's dug himself in a corner with this yeah. whole wetcon thing. Like, what's safe? What isn't Although, safe? Well, no, a really fun tidbit is that since it was um, three years, it was 2009, three years, retcon three years. But the retcon doesn't work like that because the ghost has been six years. Yeah. That means, yes, in the alpha session, it's still the year 2012. But in a matter of how much time has passed... It is now April 2015 in the comic. He caught it up. He caught it up. I can't believe this. <laughs> because this is how he perfectly... Perf now, now it makes sense that Caliborn's deviant art has been act interacting with modern day. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, Vriska's Instagram. Vriska's Instagram was created today, even though she created it in 2012. But it was still created today, yeah. technically. That's because the way retconning works, it oh. still was created today. Oh my goodness, it's what's my head. And... For those, I don't think we mentioned this yet. Yes, Whiska Willie does have an Instagram account. That's yes. a real thing. It has 49 images, and it's all 49 that are in the comic. However, when it shows their Instagram in the Flash, it says 88 pages, 88 images uploaded. Because it's Whiska. That's, it, that's just because Vriska. She's also not even on Instagram. She's on Vriskagram. Vriskagram. And she has a, a little Twitter thing, check mark, meaning she's verified. The Instagram doesn't even have that, I don't think. Do, do they? Um, I don't know. I just realized about Vriskagram. This implies that she got some sort of theme overlay to make it look like that. I believe so, yeah. But she, she did that herself. She coded that. That's what the um, uh, Harris did in Prongle for Hive Swap. She made her yes, own little theme at the top. The Prongle image is a Harris theme. She so put a special little banner on it. Themed around on all yeah, that. Yeah, it makes fish puns everywhere. So, Hussie's okay. already... Uh, Where's look, the rando payoff? <laughs> he was yelling about randos again tonight. It's so great. We This is leading into Hive Swap with all the... Instagram accounts, kind of like Prongle, mm -hmm. not to mention the Illuminati conformed thing reminded uh, me of Gene since, Hawley. Hussey has been doing this since, since uh, 2010 for Dave's blog. It yeah. It was a made-a-day vlog in 2010. Oh, and Caliborn is a vine. Yeah, but Wait, he doesn't have a real vine. It's a fake vine. Yeah, Rachel had to come in the Reddit and say, don't bother looking, he didn't make the vine, calm down. But he said it was, he had to spoil it. Like, it was a big reason he had a fake vine. Yeah. It was fake for a Pacific canon reason. Uh-huh. We don't know. We don't know yet. For some so maybe reason, just because Hussey didn't film it that way, but maybe because there is a reason of what interacts with the real world and what doesn't. Um, all the characters of these fake social media accounts now. Yeah, I I'm I'm calling away. I, I want Cockett to have like a Prongle account or something. Yeah, well, after Alex Hirsch did that, uh, uh, Bill Cipher AMA, Hussey had to step up his game. There's a lot to compete against now. <laughs> Whiskas Instagram. Whiskas has not commented or talked with anyone yet. Very upset. Maybe by tomorrow. So she doesn't even, even have captions on all the photos. I, want, I was expecting some really generic Instagrammy captions. Whiska and the new screen shots wear sunglasses. He's got Gamzy mind control as a little slave, Fanny uh -huh. Hall. She's drinking like um, out of an eight ball. Mm -hmm. And she's like fully painted her nails and does her all makeup and posts. Mm -hmm. He's turned into the most generic Instagram person ever. She's a Mary Sue now. Yeah. That's exactly what he is. Yeah, both literally and storyline-wise. What was that old uh, form spin question that was going around? Which, um, that was about Vriska in Act 5, Act 2, playing the role of a self- She was self-inserting herself into the, uh, kids' session, as Hussey said on his form spring. Which is exactly what she's still doing now. Her character arc is still going of, she wants to control the comic, all about her. She wants to be the reason behind everything. And she wants to be a self-insert character who makes everyone happy, and whatever she is, everyone's happy, and everything turns out fine, because she's the hero. Like, for example, we literally see a scene of 
while I was getting drunk from Act from uh-huh. Act Six, and I'm like, okay, so maybe there was some conflict yeah. here. He is writing it back. Two seconds later, Whiskers storms into the room. See, knocks Rose's drink. Mm-hmm. Um, exaggerated like it's like see, he exaggerates it so much. Mm-hmm. See, so throws the drink across the room, and everyone starts clapping and applauding for her. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, this can't be happening. She's Riska has taken Hussey had controlled the narrative for one page for uh, MSPA reader mental breakdown. Now Riska has controlled the narrative again. She gets to do what she wants. It was Caliborn taking control of Riska. Because she's just playing right into Lord English's hand, like we mentioned before. Yeah. But out of her own free will now. For that one page, Hussey got a command. He got to, he got to put an MSPA command. That one page he got. He yes, got to put it was an, an MSPA. actual command. The first one in two years. We also had Hussey text saying, next update will be blah 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 on the page. Yes. Like, Andrew Hussey had control of the narrative for one page. Yep. But because the last time that happened was Spade Slick Exit in uh, 2013, and that was right before the Mega Pause. It was just a few pages before. Because when it came back from Mega Pause, Caliborn had control. And then he plugged in the Super Cartridge Expansion Pack, which is a pre made DLC for, the, for Homestuck. So it doesn't have commands. There's no nothing reader submitted. You can have reader submitted commands in a prepackaged DLC. So now this was the one page Hussey had control of because it was in between acts. There was it, it, uh, MSPA reader mental breakdown is not in any act of the comic. It's between the acts. Or Hussey has Hussey's domain is it's his last domain he has left. Yeah. Do, I, Which that leads me to believe that between six 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 and Act Seven there'll be a short interlude. I think um, the acts are going to break, and mm-hmm. between Act 8, oh god, you know, eight, Act 7 isn't included in the cartridge pack. When 666 ends, Hussey has to pull another disc or DLC cartridge pack out of something. Yeah. Or in the comic, it's such a made away that it's not even a comic anymore, and Act 7 is a special symbolic thing. Um, I still think something's gonna happen with a disc that we will have to do another Doc Scratch segment for someone to repair a disc, and we'll have to read the panels and do that whole thing again. Yeah. Because that is a great way of wrapping up one Pacific character story in a made way, and wrapping up, like, five other Stu scattered panels, mm-hmm. and quickly getting across the story. What really gets me is that I really thought he was gonna do the Cawcat story I thought of. Mm-hmm. J- not exactly, just something similar to it. A Doc Scratch. It could have been Vriska. Yeah. That was the other idea I had, was that Vriska was going to play Doc Scratch, and that C would give us panels and throw them at us. Something like that. Vriska or Kake, he made a character, just so that we could get through the story that quickly. Because mm-hmm. Hussey wants to get through the story quickly. He only has 600 pages there's, left, he said. Yeah, there's 400 pages plus less than 400 pages. So like so 600. Somewhere between 500 and 700. But by doing this thing with the retcon timeline, and John's throwing a lesson where his friends have to overcome challenges, that only tacks on another 1,500 pages worth mm-hmm. of content. There's a lot of stuff he has to do now. Yeah. All it does is just make the comic longer, and by specifically doing the fandom sippy thing, I'm starting to think, like, he's winding down Homestuck, and he's like, no, I think I can get a little extra money from this. <laughs> He saw that what Pumpkin had made ninety-seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars from that four thirteen yeah, seller. Yeah, that's what the estimate is. Well, Pumpkin has actually said that there's no future products right now because they've halted all production of anyone in mm-hmm. the factory, just so they could sip the orders from four thirteen yeah. because the there's so sell many stuff has gotten so out, out because they had the Paradox Space book to release, but it's still not out yet because they got swamped. They, they didn't they didn't expect that for the sell. The sell was too much for them to handle. They sold a lot of stuff during the sell. Yeah. Uh, I like to notice how uh, Hussey shifts. He's really good at shifting interest. Like, just look at the way our podcast is going right now. We're just talking update theories. That's because the day the comic came back, he ended Paradox Space. There was no new merchandise, and there's been not a single scrap of Hive Swap news. There has been nothing outside the main comic. Yeah. And it's really weird, too, because Homestuck goes back into this Knits web comic he theorized about. Yes. And then he's going to go, oh, Homestuck needs a little break. Bam, all the gaming websites say, Homestuck video game. Check this yep. out. Talk about this. Like, Hussey's just like, once you stop talking about this, this is what you're going to talk about. Then right. this. But no matter what happens, there's always going to be Homestuck to talk about with him. Mm-hmm. He always has something. So why does he do three Pacific hiatuses in the new new horse calendars he released? The, yes. Um, we finally get the schedule. So I have the exact dates here. We got the schedule on yeah, the, the updates. Form of little horse calendars. 
I it's like this schedule a lot more. Mostly paradox-based schedule weekdays for us, which for us um, West Coasters is uh, what Sunday night through Thursday night. Yes, nine o'clock every night. It begins on the twenty seventh, which is next Monday. He's taking a week off to get things ready. And it goes all the way through mid-July right now. And more to come as he's drawing more panels. And there are two times where there's a week off. It is mid-May from the 18th to the 22nd. And mid-June from the 8th to the 12th. There will be no updates. Those two specific weeks. See, Tumblr user Jade Slick pointed out that that horse right there... The it's horse right before the update is a horse eating a rose. What does it mean? Well, it's a lot. The, Rest in pieces. The, this this set of updates will be nothing but theorizing how each update relates to the horse picture that Hussey pulled off of Google in ten minutes about an hour ago. No, he didn't pull us off of Google. He spent hours theorizing over each horse, thinking uh-huh. about which ones to put. And need I remind you, he said he was going to put up this horse schedule about, what, 12 hours ago? He spent about 12 hours making this well, horse schedule. Well, a week and a half ago. But he's going to keep saying he's been delaying it. Yeah, so he obviously put a lot of work into this horse schedule. Mm-hmm. There are some hidden messages within yep. the horse schedule. There are updates every Munhay, Winshay, Fry Horse, as well as now, Two Snort and Thurs Clop. Thurs Clop. Yeah. Thurs Clop. Yeah. My goodness. Now, with this new update, how much attention has the comic gotten lately? Because I went on Tumblr and my whole dashboard exploded. Mm hmm. Um, nobody likes Steven Universe anymore. Nope. People have all, it's all jo- disappeared. It's all just people back in Homestuck. He got, like, all the diehard fans in with the MSPA Weedle Mental Breakdown, mm-hmm. and suddenly, like, at least, what, 50,000 more people from Tumblr mm-hmm. are now saying Homestuck's back. Yeah. And all these Homestuck back posts are confusing me, because, like, I was reading the Calibon Masterpiece, like, a week ago. Yeah. But th- those J- Dave Cat images of them cuddling on the couch has gotten all these weirdos to come back into Homestuck. Even people who haven't touched Homestuck in over a year. People who left during the Gigapause are coming back to it. Mm-hmm. Because they've heard how amazing this new Whisk update is. Now, it's kind of weird, because this is the update that killed my hype for, like, an hour. So I finally <laughs> realized... This is supposed to kill my hype. Yeah. And then I realized, wait, this is an update. Risk has taken the narrative. This is an update made to kill my hype so this even exists? Yeah. I I don't know. Hussey went too far with mental breakdowns. Now he's got to ease back into the comic. Yeah. Ease back into it. I I like says, I loved mental breakdown. This last, that was the this best is the class. Last real Homestuck act of just normal goofing around. Then things get crazy from there. He said in the mult in the different news posts they're very loose panels. He didn't care about much about the art. He does just rush anything. Four hundred of them he's got to draw, but they're all really really dialogue heavy. Yeah. He spent most of the gigapause writing so he, so and he still wasn't done when the megapod when the gigapause ended. So it's a lot of heavy character he says development. It's heavy heavy dialogue. How can we get heavy on character development where all the character development we previously had has been a waste? That's got, that means a lot more setup. Do it again. This is four new alpha kids. These kids are unlike anything we've ever met. I know. They're going to be only loosely what we imagine them as. But we're also going to have to have the whole dialogue of John and Waxy and them realizing what they've done. Yeah. Waxy's going to meet these new alpha kids and they're going to be horrible. Mm-hmm. And um, when John finally does meet up with Happy Cawcat and Dave and all of them and Kanaya, they, they all can remember who John is. Mm-hmm. Remember, John missed out on the Meteor character development the first time, so he won't notice much difference. Yeah. Except for the, he did talk to them uh, post uh, uh, the Mega Pause update that we didn't get to see during the Mega Pause. Uh, so he, there might be a little bit, but he only talked with post Meteor. Uh, Kids for, uh, and trolls for like an hour or two. I think it's Jade. He doesn't that, know him all that It's well. Jade what's going to make him is realize. The main one that had a lot That's of what's going to get him because in the first version, mm-hmm. John was best friends with Jade on the media. They yeah. hung out, they played Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. That was how they got through this. In the second version, why Car Cat and them were all partying, Jade spent the three years alone uh, mm-hmm. um, suffering from depression because her friends blew up right in front of her. And she, she had Duddle and. The iguanas. Yeah, I don't think Jade's doing too well. I've seen a lot of people talking about how when we when we see the new version of Jade, mm-hmm. even though we saw when the V moves was Callie. John knew he was going to do this with the ultimate the ultimate choice, which your friends will suffer as you do. Yeah, I don't know. 
How, how's John gonna realize what he's well, done? No, I know something really, really sad about this new universe, like this new rec- this new retcon timeline. So here's, this is the worst thing I've ever said. What? Casey's dead. Yeah, Casey's dead. She, she was on the planet. Casey the Salamander was dead. Yeah. This timeline is messed up. Is I need I need a retcon so. immediately. Who cares Dave Cat's canon? Casey's dead. Casey the Salamander is then dead. Okay. Jasper Sprite turned out to be okay, so. Wait a minute. Where did the Aqueous come from? We don't know. I just don't realize that. He, where, where did the Aqueous come from? He went into Little Seb, which, even though the timeline was retconned, still ended up going with Caliborn in the future. Uh, oh my can, goodness. Somehow, after John retconned the timeline, it still kept going to the point that Caliborn existed and uh, they all met up with Caliborn. Uh. We don't know yet. But just don't think about it because it's a major plot hole until Hussey comes up with another crazy thing to fix it. And he said there's no more plot holes. The only plot hole was Casey not aging. Yeah. And that might be the proven by the whole juju magic soul theory, but we don't know about that. Yeah. That's I... not Hussey's focus right now. We're going we still gotta finish up retcon timeline stuff before we get to that. Oh my goodness. Hussey's a lot to do in six hundred pages. He's not gonna get this done at all, no. He has six hundred pages and two acts that are just flash, 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 flash. I'm still thinking either Whiska, Call Cat, or someone scratch segment in between um Innomus and Five and Act Six X X X. Yeah. We have to get something. He has to do interludes between every act now because he's running out of acts. Yeah. He's got to do a big flash in between every act. And even a blatant recap. A last, last fandom joke with the whole Illuminati thing uh-huh. and the Salt Scamsy. There was a lot of new information in that flash. Yeah, that was a major new one. That it, it, it was what we've been waiting for. It was technically Little Cal Fast Forward to Lord English. Which yeah. We've been waiting for for a while now. It was really, really cleverly designed so that it didn't make the reader feel dumb. Yeah. It's not like, ha, you guys are so dumb. I'm just going to spell it out for you. Here's everything about Lord English. It was in the comic. You guys could have figured it out, but I have to explain it to you. No, no, no. He hid it behind all this Illuminati joking and these, uh, he put false information in there like AR's hat. Yeah. So that when he does tell you what little Cal was doing this and you didn't notice, it is not condescending making you feel dumb. It's just, here's every little bit of information plus some jokes. It was a really, it's a really, really good executed flash. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He's probably been sitting on that for about four or five months now. Oh my god. Now that he whipped it up last week. Imagine <laughs> having that and not... Did he, did he whip it up last week? He might have whipped it up last week. It's the only way he could have known about that Solix panel people would obsess it's over. That Solix Gamzy panel that gets me, man. Mm-hmm. That Solix Gamzy panel. There's that... no way he should have known that that would be the panel everyone would obsess over. It's a random two second instance of one flash, and he knew people would make fun of it. How? Uh, maybe he said, you know what? When he revealed what little Cal Tooley was, the people would immediately jump towards that Solix to panel. To that exact shot of a. That two second shot of a flash from four years ago. Maybe. You never know. Enough, so he knows a lot of information. But when he went on about Crowball's hat. Uh huh. Now, when he went on about Crowball's hat, he was actually going on about triangles. Mm-hmm. What does it mean? Illuminati confirmed. There you go. Um, how long do you think it'll be till we get to the next flask? We're going to have at least tons and tons of pages Mostly of Mostly dialogue for this. Yeah. Fact. It may. Remember, we're still in the Super Cartridge expansion pack, which promises new exciting gameplay features. So we'll get. What we'll get is some. Interactive looking pages with characters yeah, we're gonna slightly get more, off screen. Uh, walk around Miss Ducks and uh, uh, store pages and stuff like just cl- clickable pages. Yeah. Along with characters that break boundaries and character select menus that break boundaries, just like the early intermissions of the X66. Okay. And then I'm guessing in between Innovation 5 and X6 will be a giant mm-hmm. flash. And that's where things start really kicking in. But the only problem is John's windy powers affected the cartridge. Ye- when he went to well, fight his planet, it flew the cartridge out, meaning his retcon stuff may not be part of the DLC cartridge. That may be something unintended, in which case we're in a whole new section where the comic is making itself up as it goes. It's not on a pre-made disc or DLC. Wait, when the cartridge flew out, Little Seb stuck it back in. Arquist did, yeah. Which means Little Hal stuck it back in. Mm-hmm. Why would he do that? Little Hal's just making sure everything that goes according to plan. Oh, John needs Ooh. to be able to John the, the cartridge isn't in and we can't continue watching and we need to watch just enough so that John will retcon in and beat Caliborn up so that Caliborn will be the, realize he needs to make his masterpiece in which case AR will finally be able to 
have his soul torn in. Little house terrifying. <laughs> Little house terrifying. I'm gonna say that right now. I'm going to assume the Equius half is not in on the plan, and the AR side is, and that's why it looked like an accident that AR was sucked into Cal into the juju. Yeah, I, I, I think that AR is secretly a genius behind mm -hmm. Equius. Little Hal is the most important, one of the most, one of the smallest characters in Homestuck. Yeah, well, he he's been setting this stuff up since early Act Six. He's been making fake conversations with Jake, uh, pretending to be Dirk, setting up the relationship, and then destroying the relationship, and then getting Jake to do this and do that. And I, I have to reread. I think it's somehow the cause of Jake talking to Caliborn to get the trickster code. So, AR's re has a lot of influence oh in the Alpha God. King session. He also AR put together Dirk Synchronize. There's there's just two things I don't understand. Number one, I always wanted this character to become the villain of Homestuck. Mm -hmm. That was the moment he went on the whole spiel about how Hal 9000 is his greatest hero to look yeah. up to. I'm like, oh, this guy's kind of terrifying. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm changing my name to Little Hal because I really like Hal 9000. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that how does Dork making a 13-year-old AI of himself turn into that? What went mm -hmm. wrong? Because there's a few major reasons. First of all, because tin cans don't have emotions. And second of all, because mm -hmm. if you have a robot, it has to turn evil. And third of all, you do not make a robot with red eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a bad idea. Yeah, there's, there's, there's. I'm sure there's gonna be some crazy thing of a uh, till death code got in it, or Roxy did something, or uh, a car cat did something. Some, some. There's a lot of coding in the comic that it could go anywhere. Yeah. There's a lot of coding characters in this comic. You got Solix, John, Carcat, Roxy, Dirk, Brobot. Ghost Rider. Yeah. Ghost Rider's gonna come back. Why? Right? I love to see that whatever right? Dirk alchemizes, it, uh, you know how they can go, uh, sprites can go into robots, right? Not alchemizes, sprites. Whatever, sprites can go into robots. Yes. Whatever Dirk sprites is probably gonna take over Sahu or Zilly Wave. Finally, they're gonna be important. Yeah. We're gonna be so happy we have them now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And isn't you so you mentioned earlier when I was talking with you on the Not podcast that there was a Brobot laying around, right? I can't recall where Brobot went. Where did Brobot? He got a big go? showdown with Jake and you and Prince of Heart rise up, and I cannot remember what they did with him. Because that's oh, you know what? He tore his own heart out when he was programmed to love Jake. That's why and then Jake picked up the uranium went in. So there's a destroyed Brobot on Jake's island that may be of some importance because that's another thing a sprite can take over. And a Hal, a AR sprite in Brobot would create the red and black Hal from sprite from uh, mental breakdown. Yeah, because that Hal spot he created. I know it's a nod to the fandom, and the fandom draws him like that, so mm -hmm. he had to put it in. I still think that's going to end up as a villain of the comic at one point. Yeah, at some point. It's sort of what Quackato Jane looks like already. When you, I, I want a little more emphasis on how uh, Dirk's powers work. He puts he can put take souls out, but if he can't destroy a soul, then it gets sucked into things instead. How did how, how did little Hal get sucked into the juju? It's a robot. It's a tin can. It's now a soul. Did being sprited give it a soul? It made him alive. Mm -hmm. So could the so could Dirk just create AR sprite and then suck out the soul and put it into some kind of item? Maybe. But what do you put it in? I don't know. What, what, what's an AR juju? What's a juju they have access to? They have the lollipop, they have the rings, uh, and that's it, right? Yeah. The little I... Cal you already threw out. Hmm. Unless, this, little, unless this, this version of Caliborn didn't tell him to throw Cal into the water. Spade Slick has eggs oven in his uh, inventory. Yeah, eggs timer and oven. There's some key jujus there. <laughs> the, the crowbar. Yeah, there was, that's, that, that already has that's a, a Juju Blake card. And it probably already has a soul in it. It's yeah. probably Dirk's. Because it can destroy souls. That's, is that the only Juju Blake What are the Juju Blake are there? That's the only confirmed one. Okay. We assume Calliope's gun and wand and every variation of Strider's shades and swords. Except Dirk's sword because it was alchemized. Oh, uh, okay. Unless... Dirk's Zilly Sword was the creation of Dirk's Sword, and through shenanigans, it's also Bro's Sword. It probably is. But so that means he didn't pick it up at an anime convention at one of the sword booths. Yes. It's, it's, oh, that's still such a good theory, though. That's, that's, that's so good. Uh, you no, know, it, it's hussy. It's got to be to have timeline this and retcon that. You know what I'd like to know? Juju there. If if Bro saw didn't go to conventions then and get all these anime swords, uh -huh. why was he traveling so much in LA and all this, doing all this stuff? 
I don't know. Something to do with Juju's. Getting hunting down Juju's. He got Lil Cal. And he got the shades. And he got the sword. I wonder if he found these Juju's at like just an anime shop. And he's like, oh, this shouldn't be here. We know he's in cahoots with Mom. Which means he was probably in cahoots with Grandpa. Which he, he all, probably helped build Jadebot. Yeah. It's I, too similar to Brobot, Uranium, and... I, I started Arsenal. a wedding topic about that, doing my wee weed. Yeah. It looks like Bro took his gloves off. It doesn't look like Grandpa. There's no way that's Grandpa. No way. Does, does that look like Jake English building that robot and to you? It doesn't even look though like on him. the page, Jade says, I think my grandma did... My grandpa mm-hmm. built this. The next page, Call Cat mentions, Wait, how do you remember this? And Jade says, I don't actually. I don't remember any of this at all. My denizen just told me. Yeah. And this is what I vaguely remember. Yeah, so you can't even take those panels for canon. It's just vague memories. Yeah. Well, the panels look like what actually happened. It's Jade's dialogue that's got to yeah. be it. Not what's happening. Because mm-hmm. it is very obvious in that panel that we see a young Jade playing with Squiddles and Bro Strider making other robot. Gra- Grandpa was shooting butterflies at point blank range. You think he knew how to build a robot? No. <laughs> no, I don't. He was having a tea party with a doll. <laughs> I remember this is all because of his horrible... Uh, 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 um, he's missing his ex-wife and children who went missing one day. Hive Swap's going to be a, <laughs> and a really emotional roller coaster for all of us. Yeah. The game itself will be emotional. Just, you know the repercussions of these events. We already know two characters are dead. Yeah. This game's going to be a, something, man. Something happens to the kid. Something happens to his wife. And Mirfka Durkis and Necton Welfin are dead. You, you, when you make a game like Hive Swap, you're inclined to make some sort of sequel in the Dream Bubbles or something. You cannot yeah. leave it with an ending like that because the fan base you're giving it to already will know what happens. They're like, well, that ending wasn't happy at all because we know what happens five minutes later. This is horrible. Yeah. Like, I mean, just look at the Star Wars prequels. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> Hive Swap's not going to be the Star Wars prequels, right? Right? Misa new fan troll. No, if there's, if there was any Jar Jar like character, it's, it's, it's ninety four. Oh. You're safe. Oh, the special edition isn't even out yet. You're you're all safe. Okay, <laughs> okay, I think we're good. I wonder, can knowing Hasi, how many Taco Bells I'm going to have to go to get the highest swap Happy Meal toys. <laughs> all right. Well, offers. speaking of that, how close are you to finishing? I think we are. How close is Hussy to finishing <laughs> Homestuck? He says within 600 pages or so. It looks, judging by the horse calendar, the 400 pages will be up by July. So we're assuming September for end of normal updates. And then 1025, 1111, and 413 and such for special dates for big flashes. He could have it over by December if he doesn't care about dates and he just gets it done. Quick thoughts on an ending. I, I... No. <laughs> no, he just says no. Us has been saying since 2010 that he's a, a, he could end it if he wanted to. And he's never wanted to. Like, he had the chance right now. Like, I, what did, what did, Let me see what he uh, said. I feel like he really did have the chance with the record being stopped. Any character could have stopped that record. Yeah. And could have gone to Doc Scratch saying, we could add a few panels to wrap up the corn ox, and we could have led into Endgame. Yeah. But doing the whole wet con whisker thing, you're adding Here. so much more As content. As he said in the it. news post, he said, um, It is obvious that he wants to get more money out of this. He says, I, I hope you like when teens talk to each other because that's mostly what this act's going to be. We're going to get through all that. Fake teens are going to sit around. A bunch of stuff's going to, cool stuff's going to happen. And that'll be that. All right. Well, it really ends with the news post with, and that'll be that. That'll be that. That'll be the end. It is six year long epic story. He's just like, yeah, that, that'll be that. We're at the yeah, end. Of you know, one. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. And it's taken away by Boba Fett at Denzel. <laughs> By sewing a sticks harpoon and the jailbreak gun, now he has a lot to wrap up because now he's got all the yeah. press of wrapping up the MSPA storylines. Uh-huh. There's no way he could possibly I mean, do he's it. He's finally decided this is the last MS Paint adventure. He's yes. moving on to different prospects after he's done with the comic. There's no more reader-suggested based comic for him. Hive Swap? Any closer? We have no word. Nothing. All we know is that a few game sites put May as their release date. We don't know how official it is. But now we have an odd week in May and an odd week in June that don't have Homestuck updates. So we may be setting those aside. Like we said, the comic and Hive Swap are separated. When one's going, the other one doesn't. Well, we will know soon enough, won't we? May is just around the corner. May 1st is Shelby Craig's new comic. She has a lot of the in-comic in art for Homestuck. She's, she and one of her friends are doing a... Re- they, all we know is it's based on video games. There's all these player select menus she's putting up. And it's a webcomic that is 
fueled by reader suggestions. So she's she's trying MSPA out. All right, so that, and, that'll be uh, interesting. Uh, a preview of next week's episode. We'll be watching Act Two Woo! on Friday night. I'm so exciting! Here we're gonna get our popcorn. Talk about the timelines and retcon and stuff, and you're gonna be like John fighting the imp. Yeah, we're gonna get popcorn, some candy, a zilly hoo, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna settle in for Act Two, courtesy of our Patreon pledger. Vriska. So if you'd like to control the show and tell us what to do, go to the <laughs> patreon.com, P A T R E O N.com, and search 91 Reasons. And there's a really economical way you can have your say in the show. The easiest way to support the show and the most uh, cost effective, cheap way is simply to go to iTunes and leave us a review. It costs nothing and helps us. Oh, Austin's raising his hand. See, you, sir. You see, you see, just like in the update today, Vriska is taking control of our narrative and choosing him with a path That's we right. go on. That's right. If you choose to go up to the old mill, turn to page 80. <laughs> if you choose to get in the truck with Uncle Jim, page 17. What page do I go on for Hamlet to uh, make sexist jokes at Ophelia? Uh, that would be the last action hero. Where Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> plays Hamlet. He goes, to be or not to be. And then there's a big explosion. He goes, not to be. <laughs> Any last words before we wrap it up? I, I think that's I think that's a good note to end on. All right. Thanks for listening. I am the voice, Jeff Tucker. You didn't hear me, but you don't have to because the resident Homestuck experts have taken over the show. And they are... Austin. Luna. And together we are... 91, 91 Reasons. reasons.